So yeah, Mammy. yeah, I I snuck her in the back door and tied her to a chair for your listening perusal today. And we're uh yeah. we're hey, we're at the fifteenth of February two zero two zero. What do you think of that? Did you get anything for cycles for Valentine's Day? Not a fucking thing. You know what? Hmm. I posted on Twitter and apparently nobody noticed it. That um, why is it that we have to have a special day to acknowledge and appreciate those closest to us? I don't know, but I asked her the day. I, I thought it was the day before Valentine's Day. The day I asked her, I said, well, do you want to be traditional? Blah, 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 blah. We came to a decision, and I thought it was the next day. So the next day comes along, and it's the 15th. I went, wow, not only can I lose entire countries, but now I'm losing American holidays. Well, I'm losing them too, so it's no big. Actually, wow. I'm not losing them. I'm leaving them behind. I'll just, yeah. I'll just put that right, leave that right there, and I'll just keep walking. Yeah, but That's they're going to. I'm at. They're going to throw it. It's a tradition, you know. It's, it's the American way. You gotta buy fucking diamonds, or these niggers are going to come and move all in. Need if you yeah, keep them at home. Okay. Anyway. Dark table yeah. time. Hey, Grim, Dark you're, table. Aren't you glad you got us on your radio today? <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, and... Particularly dorky. And Mr. Grimner announced uh, last night that he hit his quota to survive at the bare minimum on the reallibertymedia.com. But for those of you out there in Radio Land and other places, if you feel generous... He accepts the dough, and it goes to running the site, not to his heroin addiction. That's just a horrible rumor. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> unless you're talking about the heroin in the movie, because you know he—he, he, I'm sure he has an addiction for that heroin. <laughs> Sammy, Jimmy's gonna love me. <laughs> yeah, he, he's been watching Sammy play the guitar again. Uh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, hey, yeah. we got a small crowd. We, we lost we lost people on Real Liberty Media, or I don't know, maybe they're all working. Or it's a weekend and they're going somewhere. It's a weekend? Is this a weekend? Uh huh. How can you tell? Um, because hmm? I looked at my calendar on the computer. Well, because other than that, I really yeah. don't, you know. Or I get little notifications on my phone telling me you have to be at your mother's. Such yeah. and such day because you have to take her to this appointment or you have to take her to that appointment or you know, da, da, da. so if nobody else tells you what day it is, then you don't know what day it is. Wow, it gets that way, yeah. You know, you sound exactly like me because <laughs> when I wake up, you know what day it is every fucking day when I wake up, no matter what day. Today, it's today. It's today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's and now. Not only that, I live in your future. I've oh. done things that you haven't even thought of doing today. <laughs> and you did them seven hours before right. I even thought of waking up. <laughs> See how you are. Well, that's the way they make it sound. <laughs> you know, like, they, they, they close the imaginary stock market. That's pretend in the first fucking place, but they have operating hours to run computers. Yeah, those those computers that if you leave them on, they'll operate all night long. But if you, yeah. But a hotel in Las Vegas will take your fucking uh, keto money at 4 a.m. <laughs> oh, yeah. Which oh, one yeah. of those two? <laughs> okay, anyway. <laughs> the stock market makes me giggle. Did you notice? It's gambling or it's gambling. Either way, you're gambling. With what? Debt. Hey, you want some more of my debt? Oh, no, I want to win some of yours. <laughs> yeah. I right. can't wait to win some debt. So when you actually understand that, right, you find mm -hmm. out how useless it is because you know what you need to survive in this fucked up life that we got. Money. <laughs> Money, 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 now, money. If you don't have money. some, yeah, some mm -hmm. visible source that you can explain, you don't have to prove anything until you go to court, but at least explain where the money comes from. And you know what you can't have? 
What? Cash. Bullshit. I have some. Yeah. Not a lot, some. but I oh. do have some. You know what? Try try living on cash only. Let's see how long you survive. I have I have coinage even. Mm-hmm. I have things that go jingle, jangle, yeah, jingle. Yeah, you're talking about after the apocalypse when all the zombies are, you know, scouring the wasteland, looking for brains. And, you know, that makes me realize that all those parties that I was at in my yeah. younger days when yeah. I learned how to snap yeah. uh, pennies mm-hmm. and bottle caps, by golly, I got an unlimited supply of penny projectiles. Yeah. <laughs> Well, well, not unlimited, but I got a lot of pennies. You know, it's like my favorite band said when they did their fourth album. Uh huh. Well, the other he, they named it the other three ain't bad. <laughs> oh. Okay. <laughs> so should we say hey to everybody? You hey can. To I'm not going to say anything to any bots. And okay. Bots. Ah. Well, I see Barman right up top. No, he you is go right the there. bot. Barman. D. Bot. There's other bots, but no one is a bot like Barman Bot. And I then we know. also got Beetle. I, I know, I know him. him. Beetle. You do? Yeah. I haven't seen him chitty chatting today, but I yeah, haven't really I think been paying attention. Early, early. Yeah. Ah, mm-hmm. I also see Grimner uh, is here, the RLM God. Grimner. And the lovely Moose Gale Moose is also Girl. logged in, oh. although is she awake? Mm. I don't know. Um, I also see the lovely Miss Kate down in Florida. Miss Kate down in Florida. Yeah. And we got some anti going anti. on now. I did see anti chatting earlier today. Oh. Got some, yeah, some Asmodeus Asmo in the chat as well. And Asmo. some Chalcedoni. And Cycle. 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 Hello, the honey. lovely Cycle. She's right here. And, yeah, and Flasher. Yeah, You're that's here. me. Hello, me. How are you? <laughs> I also Welcome. see Frumpy is here. Hey, I have been, Frumpy's I've here. I've been corrupting Ooh. Frumpy's brain because I've oh. been sending him links uh, uh, from they, people that channel uh, to the Pleiadians. Well, you really want to fuck him up? Send him some of that Canadian porn. Ooh, uh, no. I don't want any of that sh- I don't want that shit on really my really weird. But the Canadian porn is really weird. No, I don't want yep. none of that Eskimo <laughs> stuff going yep. on. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm kind of picky about that. But Ooh, they, they did, somebody was talking about masturbation. Yeah, but they define the difference between kinky and perverted. Oh, yeah. well. Kinky is when I'm, you use a feather, and perverted is oh. when you use the whole fucking chicken. <laughs> mm, it's them chicken lips that do it, let me tell you. Uh, come on, Anna. I'm uh, here. No, yeah, my dog is kind of... Loving on me. Your right dog's now. looking at you like, what the hell are you know. doing with she's, that chicken? She's trying something. Maybe I yeah, smell like chicken. Maybe she's thinking, he's doing something with a chicken that I don't think I want to. Is that what you're feeding me tonight? I don't want none of that. In any case, we got a Java, 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 Java Doctor 2 in the Java house, Doctor as well as Meister Brower. Meister Brower. And Prince is here, Prince. and Rob White. Rob hey, Rob, Wicks. how's your CBD oil stuff ah, going? The oil, the snake oil man of the, the snake oil media. man. Yeah, he's very happy with his snake oil. You know, that's <laughs> why whenever I do something with essential oils, I practice it on me first. Because if I'm still alive enough to blend it for someone else, then it must be okay. Mm. So. That's the way I think about it, at least. I also see Rome hmm. is here, as well as the lovely Miss Vanna White, the letter turner of the RLM channel. Uh, turn, turn. And turn, turn. yeah, and Weather Dork Vanna White turns Weather Dork's head too, hey, and mental. several other things. Yeah. Weather Dork, you know, Weather yeah. Dork's temperature rises when Vanna White walks by. Now I know this is a bot yeah. thing, but yeah. you know. Yeah. Bots be bots. bots. I also see Phantom is here. Duck, Phantom. And CC66. Yeah, I'll see what I'm oh, <laughs> And a Cyborgian noodle. Uh, that's the bot that went on nuts this morning and played the Beatles album backwards. And fucked up the whole Shrink. thing. It was weird. Number nine. Number nine. That would be awesome. I also see the dork cakes, and I know you, I hey, am a cul- yeah. culture, this culture that demands that I participate in the holy days. I, mm. I'm, 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 there, I participated. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's Weirdo. as far as I'm going to get. Weirdo. We got it. I know. 
E-Man. Ah, E-Man. And Ensive. I want to see She-Ra behind she E-Man. Damn it. <laughs> Somebody come up with She-Ra for a nickname for in the chat. Why don't please? you do it? What? Is, you, because are, I already uh, got grams. So you don't have another uh, apparatus? Oh, I probably could. You could open up another window, start another name. Oh, I could do that. I could. Yeah. I may have to do that. Yeah, I've I learned some tricks that. over the years from all the people on the reallibertymedia.com that do it. Ah, yeah, mm-hmm. there you go. I can mess with people. That's right, Grimmy. Uh, that's right. Yeah, that's just right. just posted a link, and that's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Uh, which, In any case, I mean, Frumpy Woik, eh? Frumpy Frumpy's Woik. got multiple personalities going on in the chat. It's the Canadian we also got thing I'm JJ's from Scotland. <laughs> hey, JJ's. <laughs> and Papa Papa Pond Sauce is here. And Sock <laughs> Puppet. <laughs> and that Smart Az. He's uh-huh. always making some Smart Az remark. And the holiest Roger ever. z picks checked out. Yeah, I see ago. that, yeah. We've lost. We've lost another one. Hmm. We've lost the connection. Glub 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 glub. <laughs> so that's it. Mm. Okay. Well, in our latest shamdemic, they call mm-hmm. it. They call this one coronavirus. Hmm. It's the three two flu. So easy to remember it because they named a beer Corona, and it sounds yeah. it sounds kind of like hey, let's go to the bar and get a Corona, not. Yeah. You know, like some kind of punishment. But you know what? I, I listened to a rescue story. I think Grim read it. And if the guy recovered from this shit in four days, what is it? What, have we got a world, a whole planet full of pussies or what? 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 You know, you know when I was, yeah. I was listening to Dr. Bergman about that the other day, uh-huh. and he said if you, if you, if you really look at some of the backstory of this, in the Wuhan district, that place has been rated as having the worst air quality in China, which pretty much puts it in the world. Mm. But it's had the worst air quality forever. Mm. And then um, I think December 1st, they made it mandatory that everybody got vaccinated. And then guess what? The first coronavirus mm. victim showed up. <laughs> December 1st. Hmm. And in the Wuhan district. So where you've already got people with compromised immune systems because they got piss poor air, and I'm sure piss poor living conditions for quite a few of them. And if you also notice, most of the ones that are dying are above the age of 50 and of the male persuasion. You know, it's, it's, you got to look at it and you go, what the hell? Okay, this this ain't just a quinky dink here. Hmm. Well, and they're not so. helping me replace oil either. So I call tonight's episode. Don't be ridiculous. We can't replace oil. Well, not petroleum oil. No. Is there any other kind? <laughs> There's essential oils, but you know, petroleum oil is an essential oil because if your engine runs out of oil, then it's essential. <laughs> yeah, but think back and remember back in the 70s, way back, way, 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 getting your way back machine. Early 70s, a guy had built a carburetor that ran on water. Yep. Period. This is all he did. Uh-huh. He made uh-huh. the carburetor and and adjusted it to run that engine he was running. And then he, yeah. he vanished and so I guess the government gobbled up the patent on that. So, Actually, he he was meeting up with some people hmm. that were supposed to. Yeah. They were wanting to purchase his patent from him, Uh-oh. and he got he got sick and collapsed before he even got out of the restaurant. Wow! <clears throat> Ouch! I see. Yeah, it sounds like foul play to me. Yes, because what, the but, people that were with him, besides his brother, they were never seen again. Nobody knew yeah. who they were, and they yeah. were never seen again. At least yeah. not by those. People and the patent just miraculously got gobbled up for national security reasons because mm. if the petrodollar isn't secure, the nation isn't secure. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, guess it was nice knowing you guys. I hope. See, Grimmy hope says to meet up with you in the afterlife. Well, yeah, that was Henry Ford's first choice of fuel, 
was hemp oil. And, and then it, he got bought out. Well, no, they had all that oil. The, See, this goes. No, he the, got bought out. That's why he went uh, the other way. Okay, he went to uh, the dark side. You get your version of it, and I see the the power behind it was the Roosevelts, and one of them was sitting in the as vice president in the first oil glut when they had a glut. Okay, mm-hmm. and well, all the other stuff, I'm just adding to it and giving it a name so you can pick on somebody. Man. Anyway, so it's just coincidental that. There's two oil gluts in our uh, history in the United States. One of them happens when Roosevelt's um, grandfather is the vice president. And the other one happens when the other Roosevelt is in the White House 30 years later. So, Mm -hmm. see, it's these families that own these lands and shit. Uh, It's real complicated, you know. And we're all getting fucked because of words on paper. And not the actual land that all this stuff takes place on. They've managed to do away with all that in court. And you're arguing about a bit of paper and how the words are laid out on that paper. Mm-hmm. That's well, where does the truth come into play in our legal life when you think about it? Oh, I'll get a good lawyer and he'll get me out of this. Well, did uh-huh. you do it? did you do it? No. Well, then what do you need to get out of? Yeah. Well, I got Precisely. arrested for blah, blah, blah. Now I need a defense. What? You know. You but, need defense? But we've been defense is on the southern border. We've been conditioned to buy all this tra-la-la shit as crime that fucking shouldn't even be bothered with. Traffic laws, shit like that. So when you get up to property taxes and the bigger things, people are so conditioned by the small shit, they don't dare. They hear federal government or state government, they just could cringe, crawl off in a corner and start licking their balls because they keep them in a bag. (laughs) Well, I'm saying that generally as we're being held captive, it's not like anybody does this because they fucking like it. But there's a way to make the best of it. And I think part of the making the best of it comes with the pain of learning what the fuck we're doing. Yeah. Right. You have yeah. you have yeah. to have have to go through that painful process of unlearning. And sometimes yeah. unlearning is quite painful because it makes you have to give up on things that you have belived all your life. Well, like what was the worst one for you? You know, the worst belief that you had that you really, when you realized it was what it, you thought it was? Mm. I don't know that there was necessarily a worse. Okay. Probably. Right. I didn't the, know how to ask the, it. Probably the first one, though, was this whole religion thing. Mm-hmm. Well, how, you know, how did uh, you deal with it when it happened to you? And how did it happen to you? Because well, I, I don't have that I, luxury. No. When I was like seven years old, and you know, I went to school, Catholic school. You had all the penguins running around with damn rulers with the metal edge on them. Oh wow! And we were learning in religion class that children that um, you know, like if you miscarry or a stillborn baby, they go to purgatory for eternity. And so I asked the nun, why why did those babies have to go to purgatory for eternity? They didn't do anything wrong, and she told me. They were not born and baptized. So basically, they still have original sin on their soul so they can never get into heaven. Mm. And I just, I heard that and I thought, that just ain't right. Mm. That is just total bullshit. Mm. And from like seven years on, I was just, nah, this ain't right. You guys are (laughs) stringing me. This is bullshit. (laughs) Wow. So... You know, that's that was my religiosity thing. And then, you know, then when mom decided to divorce dad after he'd been screwing around on her for seven years mm-hmm. with his boss's secretary, mind you. Stop bragging. I know. But, you know, when when that happened and the church said, well, you no longer exist, according to the church, because your mom is divorcing your dad. And so therefore... They were never married because they're not doing an annulment through the church. So they were never married. So you guys no longer exist. And I'm like, wow, 
Wow. Right, right, well, right. Well, obviously, y'all don't want me to exist mm-hmm. anymore, so get out of my way, hmm. Captain Assholio. So, so you can yeah. get kicked out of your religion for shit your parents do? Yes. Well, well how many dumbasses would live? Oh, well, yeah, that would keep your family together, I suppose. Well, no, see, that's just such a messed up way to approach a problem. I, I couldn't cope with it. I mean, I yeah, understand well, it. It makes sense, but it's like for crazy people that don't want you to be free. I need a house full of slaves to do my bidding, and I'm going to keep them scared to death of living and worried about going to hell. Yep. That seems to me to be a recipe for what we have. <laughs> yeah, well, basically, it they were instilling fear porn at an early age, and mm. I just at an early age went, eh, I don't think so. You know, maybe... I've just got this extra added ability to just tune people out because I don't have any memories of anybody ever having control of me enough to tell me to believe in religion. <laughs> I mean, well, wow. Yeah. <laughs> well, just from the very first things that you hear about it, I wasn't raised that Santa Claus was real. I knew Santa Claus was grown up talk for kids made up story mm-hmm. we didn't have a chimney santa claus was my dad so no problem with that one right but what if i was jewish you know if i had been raised with that jewish shit instead of the freedom shit that i got mm-hmm. one of my parents could have just gone all freaking uh, religious nazi on me and forced me to be what they wanted me to be and i would have had nothing to say about it except okay yeah. Mm. Yeah. Well, that's and a, that's the way ninety percent of the population was raised with some form of organized formal religion. Yeah. Well, huh. a belief system mm. taught to them that by God you will believe it because I said so. Well, then it is just fascinating to me, Captain, how many people in my life that I've met that were like me or I became like this because of their influence where uh, Mm -hmm. playing the game was a finance thing. It was a job thing or a business thing, but it was never a personal thing. Uh, Yeah. Like back. You had, I'm sure you had a very interesting childhood and I did too. You know, and mine wasn't really horrid. Mm -mm. It was just one of those things where it's like, (coughs) excuse me, are you kidding me? Are you really freaking kidding me? You're going to punish these people for not doing anything wrong. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It just drives me nuts. Like the the things that I did when I was growing up that were normal to everybody are against the law or dangerous today. And as an old codger from that survived all those 1960s, I must say, what a bunch of pussies we live among. I swear, fucking embarrassing. Well, you know, they they just made more laws for our own good and for our protection because, well, you know, we need to be protected from ourselves. Yeah, it's the same here to a degree, but the less police you have to enforce then the public tends to, you know, just let let the politicians write their little laws and we'll smile at them. And when they're not here, we'll do what we like. You know, it's... Yeah. It's like a game. It's not even as though it's real, but I I would give that power that they feel they got to how much tax they pay and what they feel they get for their, their investment in taxes. It's not... the It's not the same as in the States where everybody was always pissing and moaning and trying to find shortcuts and how can I save and this, that. These people don't do that. Yeah. Well, I don't get it. I've been here a long time, but still, it's like, what is the, you know, what is the component that they've either got added to them or they're missing that I got that makes that difference? Where your society getting along is a, a conscious thing. 
Oh, and the the guy I get Cirque's yarn. She's been mm-hmm. crocheting for a while now. Well, again, uh-huh. he went to Arizona just the day I the day I show up at the store. He just got back that day. <laughs> he said he flew in, feel a little jet lag, but I slept a little on the plane. But I'll make it through the day. Mm-hmm. He says it was wonderful in Arizona. So the last day the sun was out and the last day it rained. So he's a rock hound. He goes out there to check into these uh, to that rock, some kind of rock group thing that they have in Tucson every year. Anyway. Oh, so Meisterbrow would know about it. Probably, yeah. But he just got back and, and I was saying, oh, are you getting ready? Are you already planning your next trip? And he says, I don't know. I might have got a little carried away buying stuff this time. <laughs> Oops. I might not go next year. Let's see how I do selling what I bought. But it's a year away, so anything can happen. But uh, like I keep telling you guys, this little town, I mean, and there's a lot of kids on the Internet and the phones and all this, that, and the other shit. But there's still enough people physically go down into the village part of it to do person-to-person trading. They're all capable of using the Internet. But they choose mm-hmm. they choose to go do their buying in town from certain stores, keep certain businesses going. Oh yeah, oh, sh- and that was something Farmer and I were talking about as well because we we do have a, a corrupturation. Is that what you called it, hon? Hmm. A a corrupt a corruptoration. Corrupt instead of a corporation. Oh, okay, I get it. Corruptoration. Yeah. yeah. Um. There is one about 20 some miles to the north of us that, you know, we can get some of the supplies that we were wanting to purchase. But there's also one about 20 some miles to the east of us that is a locally owned business. And so we have decided that we're going to do business with the locally owned one instead of the corporation. Hmm. So if you said it all out properly, it would be corruptoration, wouldn't it? Corruptoration. Yeah. There you go. Well, I was trying yeah. to use my grammar that I. Thank learned. you, thank you for helping me with the grammar. Well, I want to write it in the notes. Mm. So that it would be evil. So you could read it. Yeah. And so corrupt oration. Yeah. I oration. To make something up. Yeah. So I come up with C O R. Should add another R. U P T O R A T I O N. Corruptoration. There you go. <laughs> and I I even credited the farmer. The farmer says <laughs> Here, let, me, let me Yeah, it's con- it's almost like yeah, those corrupt they ration us uh, on what we're allowed to Yeah. I'm s i am I do not I see exactly what you mean there, dear. Whew. Ration. Yeah. They ration our thoughts, man. Yep. You know ration what? our thoughts and ration the amount of healthy air we can breathe and the amount of clean yeah. water we can yeah. have access to. And Do you know what yeah. happens to Hansel's head whenever we have a free thought? Uh-uh. I think it explodes. Hmm. Not sure, but some of his text makes me worry. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, you know, I, there I are think, some people that you just plain got to go, wow. Yeah, I think he, <laughs> he uses this as a reason to have high blood pressure. <laughs> ah. So I come up with, the farmer says, in, okay, instead of, I got to write instead here. Hold on one. I'm slow. Instead of a corporation, we have a corruptoration. Da, 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 da. Ta, ta, ta. He's, he's been fucking quoted on the dork table. Uh oh. Sorry, Wade. <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> Honey, you've just been quoted on the dork table. <laughs> you poor, poor bastard. <laughs> wow. Don't sue me. <laughs> he says that's never good. <laughs> you know, what? I'm thinking of doing like Greta did. I'm, I'm going to copyright my name. Dork table. Oh, there yeah, you go. Yeah, that way whenever anybody says dork, I can get paid. I think it's fair. Ah. I think it's about high goddamn time a man of my stature 
Chicken or you can babies. wag your finger at them. Did you know that Aww. you really shouldn't wag your finger at somebody? <laughs> because when you do, the, uh, your finger is like a wand, uh, and you are projecting energy at that individual. Mm -hmm. So when you wag your finger at them, you're projecting your energy at them. You're casting <laughs> a spell. You had, you Think know about what? it. The, that tape of Ted Bundy in court doing that to the judge, that still rings in my memory. Don't you wag your finger at me, young man. It's like... Wow, so here's a sitting judge in front of Ted Bundy and Miss Mary both approaching the same problem the same exact way. Wonder why? Well, because we know that that is a magic wand, and a magic wand is merely an extension of your finger. Do you are you, casting spells. Oh, Miss Mary, are you aware of how few people are open to the interpretation that you just gave? Yeah. Sadly. Maybe yeah. maybe five or six. Because the indoctrination in it is, I mean, we've been beaten. We're, we're older folk. I mean, you little missy. So when you think about, wow, if I got beat into the mental state I'm in, well, then it happened to everybody else just differently. Just wow. whatever and they you know, you show said you. Indoctrination, and my mind yeah. went indoctrination. Yeah. <laughs> well, I wonder if that's why the doctors have been taught all of this crap and to inject us all this crap so we will be a doctored nation. Because the doctor's in, yeah. and he's going to put some crap in your veins. See. And then you sound like a lunatic to the educated person out there that you know lives by the rules. Uh, and there's there's an underlying sarcasm that people are taught. They look at dorks and they go, oh, God, you're a dork. Fuck. But you're a cute dork or whatever the thing is about you. They overlook your dork shit because there's a better quality that they're after. right? But the dork in us will always have them going, oh, you fucking they, they said that again. See, and we know we're right. They know we're right. Part of them, some part of them knows. You know how you know that they know we're right? What? Because we're still talking about it. That's how. Because that mm -hmm. very concept makes whatever you're talking about right. doesn't matter what your concept is. Get somebody to agree with you. Ah, look, I'm right. See? <laughs> That's all it takes. Wow. You don't even See, have I to be right. I thought it was just since it's in my reality. Mm hmm it's real well, in my reality. What if it's in another state or country and it's still, is that not out of your reality? Huh? Huh? If huh? I accept it into my reality, yeah. then it must be real right. for uh, me. Okay, but say somebody has an abortion in a jungle in Brazil and nobody's there to hear it. Does it actually take place? <laughs> no, I <laughs> Oh, so is that like if, if a man says something in the forest and there's not a woman there to hear him, yes, is he still no wrong? wrong? Yeah, same kind of. But you know what I mean? It's same concept. People, we all, we've been TV'd into believing that we, we're, we're standing on this little mind, minuscule little bit of dirt wherever you are listening to my little voice right now. You yourself are on this little minuscule bit of dirt in some place. And that's it. It's not that big a fucking deal. Slow down a little bit, Donald. <laughs> yeah. You know? Take a breath, Skippy. Okay, but people have been conditioned and trained and, and uh, forced sometimes to accept these people in our life as people of power, position, decision-making. And the minute you tell anybody else, ah, it's just a bunch of bullshit, I don't believe in any of that, guess whose eyes roll? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the person looking at me so you know oh, yeah. I've learned to not do very often except in front of my wife I can't control myself mm -hmm. yeah well and, you uh, know and I still stay, say stuff and people roll their eyes at me mm -hmm. and, and I go back to the Bill Cosby mm -hmm. joke mm -hmm. don't you roll your eyes at me I'll roll your little head across the floor yeah. but so. you know it shows you who your friends are because your friends will accept your bizarreness, whatever that may be, without yeah. they don't judge it. They just roll their fucking eyes. What can they do? They don't agree with you, but you know your friends will give you the right to be uh, wrong if you are indeed wrong. And, oh yeah. And I think the reason that they tolerate me and all, all my you know my 
crazy ideas is because they can't prove that I'm not on to something. <laughs> well, oh, I think they tolerate you because you're funny. You're a funny. Well, bugger. I got Rob's attention because he sent, he put out a link. I should repost it. I think I will. But Rob Works put out this thing called Space Juice. And uh, I'm going to copy and paste it to the reallibertymedia.com chat for your perusal. And he, it's a pretty lengthy little bit of writing there. Keep me busy uh-huh. for at least five or six minutes. And <laughs> no, it's a, it's a 64 page thing. So when he posted it, it got kind of interrupted. I was trying to have a chat with him about it. We went off and started playing with Hansel instead. So I want Rob to know that I took it more seriously than we, we could behave at the time because we were playing with Hansel. Well, and I started reading it, and then I went, okay, I'm going to need to have some time to really sit here and absorb this. So See? I put it in yeah, my pocket. Exactly. That's at, right, but out of the three people that are involved in this, besides Rob, in this conversation, one of us already knew what it all said. <laughs> so, wow. Mm-hmm. Ah, to, I mean, to be that close-minded to something because it may contradict the indoctrination that you feel you need to defend. Fuck, if I ever need to defend my indoctrination, I'm going to kick the shit out of it. You know? I never have to explain to anybody, yeah, I'm a hippie, I got long hair, I smoke pot. Yeah. What about it? Never do I have to say that. Because people look at me and they go, oh, you're a hippie, you got long hair and you smoke pot. Huh? They go, sure. Cool, so do I. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then there's a fair amount of people that do not indulge in the Mary Jane. And we get along socially just as much as if they did. Just there's no and- interaction with we. And do you know why? Because they really don't give a shit mm-hmm. that you like to puff, puff, pass. Right. They just don't. That It's just not their thing. But, yeah, same thing. Or uh, if the the guy that owns the bar, I, he's got a name. But he, when he's riding his motorcycle or driving his car, he has a Coke. Uh-huh. I'm not getting, you know, I'm not. He lived here his whole freaking life. But he doesn't want to risk that one time. Where somebody that don't like him decided, hey, he's driving with a beard. Let's get, let's nail him. So, yeah, because that's how people are. Yeah. And I'm telling well, you, I, I've I've seen people drink six beers and drive normal like there was nothing wrong. Some people two beers and they can't drive. It's not the beer; it's the person. <laughs> true. So. Hmm. <clears throat> true. <laughs> but yeah. what? well, you know, that's where that. Be your brother's keeper hmm. kind of got warped. Because oh, I think yeah. that's supposed yeah. to mean, yeah. you know, if you're going to be your brother's keeper, that means if your brother needs assistance, you don't give them a handout, you give them a leg up. Because um, if you I give know. them a handout, they'll bite that hand that feeds them. Ah, come but, on, Mary, Mary. You, you teach a man to fish, and he, and he himself can fish for a lifetime. But if you teach a million men to fish, and you charge them each $1,000 for a license to fish, you can sit on your dead ass on an island and tell everybody how hard you work for your money. Top that shit. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I thought it was a funny joke. Well, you know, that's pretty close to what the state does. Yeah. And the state really doesn't do anything other than you have to have a license for that. Yeah. You got to pay me for a permission slip to do that. Okay, and why? Really? why? I, I'm able to do this. Why, why do, do I we have do to? Th- why do we agree? What? See, this is what I mean. When I did it with the driver's license, I didn't know what I know now. Yeah. That that took another ten years for people to start telling me this shit. I was still a kid, and then when they told me, I went, oh come on, you you're fucking around. You're trying to get me in trouble. No, th- and then. Somebody had actually uh, produced a, a letter from Arizona signed by a senator. And in our day, we had photocopy machines. Uh-huh. But this is as close to believable physical proof at that time I'd ever seen. And it said that, yeah, um, traveling is not driving, in so many words, in those words. Yeah. But it was long. It was a full document. But in that, and I'm like, whoa. Okay, 
So and then I started my experiment with uh, not having a driver's license. And nothing ever came of it, no matter if I got stopped or not. It was the time period I did it in was perfect for it. Now, uh, with all the checks and stops, and what what aren't they looking for? Illegal aliens, you know, yellow cake. Yeah. <sighs> Christ, what isn't what what happened to the country? I keep man. I used to hitchhike on the freeway at four in the fucking morning, and people would stop and pick me up. You know, give you a ride somewhere because you're hitchhiking, not whatever this shit we live now. What's this turned into? This is ridiculous. Yeah. All right. It I has. don't. Yeah, I don't remember being when I was a kid being afraid of anybody. Grown ups, schmon ups, they're just people. Whoop whoop, they're bigger than you. Yeah, okay. Some of them got bad attitudes, and some of them will hit you. But you know what? You learn to figure out which ones those are by looking at them. After a while, <laughs> they're mm-hmm. easy to spot. Bullies just got a way about it. Bully is just noticeable. You know, and then there's your incidentals that like to get drunk and, well, they like to play. You know, there's yeah. different levels of people that can damage you along life. You know? and there's so many, there's lots of easy ways to stay away from them. <laughs> and there's times you can't. <laughs> yeah, and those times that you can't, I have just learned, you know, it's really kind of sort of funny i mean people have gotten to the point where when i laugh now especially if they're trying to tell me oh well you just don't understand and i just kind of (laughs) giggle and turn away i get this look like she's mad i tell you she's mad and they leave me alone and that's really pretty freaking cool absolutely but you know life is just not exactly pretty all the fucking time and no. that, I think that's the the missing link to uh, people. You know, they want a happy ending. They want a happy trip. They want a happy fucking beginning. Nobody ever wants to get out of the fucking car and fix the flat tire. You know? Happy trails to you. Okay. Make fun. Do we meet? No, seriously. But I'm you not know, going that's anywhere. What everybody seems to think that everything should be all sunshine and oh, rainbows. Oh, well, that's what I said. And you know what? You Have you ever stopped to realize that you don't get rainbows unless you get rain? Well, I, I was making the point more of it's how you look at whatever crap that needs to be done, maintenance crap. Mm-hmm. It, it'll always suit somebody's personality to do it. You just, one person can't do everything. You, gotta, you need a group of people to you know, comfortably survive life. It's not done alone. If you're alone, then you got freedom. If you got freedom, then you don't need it, any of the people because you don't have any of the shit that goes along with not being free. See? You can have people while you're free, but you can't have things, belongings, uh, property, cars, shit, heavy shit. You can't, if you can't put it in a bag and take it with you, then you're obligated to something. See, and I think freedom is more of a state of mind. But to my ass. Uh, well, for you. Yeah, exactly. Ex- yeah, that's right. Because my life, when I'm looking out from my life, out to the world around me, I judge the whole world by the things I see, just like everybody else does. And my life, crying out loud, it, I'm, I'm a... Hmm, got it made in in a lot of ways that I didn't before where I'm from yeah yeah well uh, hmm. you can say that's because of Cirque but me and Cirque put together make a me and Cirque act differently together separately we're different than we are when we're together well I believe that yeah you know and but not everybody gets to do that. You know, run into somebody in your day that's that compatible but opposite. <laughs> it's weird. So, hmm. I don't know. Just having a moment, reflection. Coming up on six years here next month in Denmark. Wow. Yeah, six years without spending any uh, actual attempt 
to fit into their society like some kind of, you know, wannabe, but cordial enough to let them know I appreciate them letting me stay here and visit. Hmm. Yeah. Well, the proof is in the pudding. That's true. That's true. Pudding. <laughs> <laughs> right. I but, like that word. There's something about that word that's uh, too fun. Oh, I got a terrible joke, but I can't. I ain't even gonna. It's so disgusting. I don't even think I should dark table this one. <laughs> I know some bad ones, Mary. Anyway, it's but it's about custard. <laughs> Ah, I don't want to. <laughs> you already know. <laughs> okay. I don't want so, to. Well, well, anyway, I was just having a, a one of those sentimental slob moments, you know, because I see a lot of other people my age on chat sites, not mm-hmm. any one site in particular, reallibertymedia.com. And it's, <laughs> it strikes me that some people's happiness is at a different level than others people's and some people come into the room and they might like rob rob's kind of a grouchy ghost he's a curmudgeon right he's just not not mr smiley happy guy but he's consistent and he doesn't come in the room insulting me out like fuck all the women and blah 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 they're all crooked rotten bitches he never does shit like that right yeah but when somebody does how can they can, how do they still get respect from other people after showing their ass, in, 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 you know, in that fashion, where other people encourage them to do it in sense by accepting them, you know? <laughs> you know, if, if five people tell you you're doing something wrong and, and four other people tell you, hey, keep doing that, guess what's going to happen? You'll either... Listen to them or you won't. Ah, you're you're going to go with the encouragement. <coughs> We're human. We're animals, baby. That's why I renamed human beings, human things. Ah. Yep. Human things. Might as well just get all that legal mumbo jumbo out the fucking way and get right to the meat of this crap. If you ever have to deal with this pathetic system that we engage, it thinks you're subhuman. Below human, animal-like towards. <laughs> wow, we're fucked. I think, uh, who says that? I think anti, no, Beatles says that. And I go, he goes, oh, we're all fucked. And I go, no, oh. we're not all of us. And I type that, but then I think about it later and think, wow, you know what? In the long game, as carbon-based life forms on Earth, we're all fucked. <laughs> And I think the reason behind the real one reason behind it is because we accept lies as truth as a collective. If we would stick together and say, no, I want the truth and nothing but the truth and stand steady until we got it, it would change. But I can't seem to get my, you know, uh, membership of my cult up high enough you know, to get international recognition for my, you know, strike to quit fucking the planet up. But Greta seemed to be doing pretty good. <laughs> well, yeah, for a while. Yeah. Oh, God. Well, it was so obvious to be propped up by fucking big money. How else do you think oh. everybody knows who you are? Well, you think there's some guy sitting in a field in, like, Alaska going, wow, I'm going to be famous. He just thinks himself into fame? No! Somebody has to make a movie, (laughs) give him an Oscar award. What was it that uh, Al Gore got for that film he made? Uh, Inconvenient Truth, right? So he makes a movie... And people believe that if you get an award for a movie, that that's got some form of truth behind it. Why? It's a movie. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, everybody seems to be, that's part of those in entertainment industry. Saw him land on the moon in 1969. Yeah, mm-hmm. that was another one of those. 
one of those. It was programming, television you know, programming it, for your entertainment purposes. And if I was to do mushrooms and land on the moon on my own, somebody would frown upon that and try to have me under arrested for breaking some freaking stupid law that some idiot wrote down because I'm high on drugs. Hmm. And, you know, my first question is, when did human beings start deciding that their opinion of you was so fucking valuable that whatever it was, you deserve to be in a cage for smoking a plant? Yeah, yeah, you dirty plant smoker, you. Yeah, but see, that in itself is the entirety of the crime. Mm-hmm. What What were the actions at the time of the smoking incident? Well, Your Honor, he was sitting there angrily... Laughing. No, angrily eating Cheetos in a destructive way on the couch. Clearly a threat to everybody around him, sir. Do you, do you know why he was charged with a crime? Because he just plain couldn't get all that Cheeto stuff licked off his fingers, and so he wiped his hand off on the couch and left a Cheeto stain on the couch. How dare he? Okay, and as ridiculous as that sounds, we've got housing associations that they find each other if that grass is this tall. <laughs> Oh, yeah. You know, fly a certain flag, go to jail. Paint uh, your trim color. Yeah. Different. And yeah. un- unapproved Unattractive. color. What? Freedom. All uh-huh. I see is uniformity. And then I come here and I look around me and I see this this street filled with all kinds of different kinds of styled houses over the years. You know, they They just put up. What they wanted to, where there's no zoning. It's, there's no, <laughs> the land is defined by fences, but there's no real. How the hell did they come up with that particular plot of land to decide? Don't have any covenants going on, huh? I, I I don't know. It just seems like they were more concerned with living inside than were with. Well, is it going to be straight? Are the is that fence going to be? The things that matter, matter, and the things that don't matter, they don't matter. Really don't. But but they play like they matter so that we can keep the society alive. But there's just a common decency. And if you're from somewhere else and you come here and decide to cause trouble, or if you live here and you're a teenager, everybody knows it. So, wow, it's terrible. It's a small town. People gossip and shit. Oh. Oh yeah, they, you do it. And they're on, gossipers. Uh, Ooh. Didn't, you didn't know that, did you? And then they do it in Danish. Go for it. I have wow. heard. I have heard many stories. Oh yeah. Well, one. I, I'll just give you the example of something that happened. I'm sitting outside of the bar about two years ago, summertime. Beautiful day. I've got my. I've just enjoying my time sitting there having a beer and the uh the owner of the bar comes up to speak to me for a bit you know be social and all of a sudden this big tall guy walks up to the table out of fucking nowhere just starts talking yeah 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 doesn't ever give her a fucking second to get a word in edgewise this goes on for a couple minutes then he stops finally talking and she says something back and he leaves and she goes I hate that son of a bitch. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> Looks me right in the fucking face. Go, that, that banker is just, he's just a terrible man. <laughs> okay, there you go. So, Whee! see, the fortune that I have is just so subtle. Because I don't need to know the language to know that whatever he said pissed her off. Because she said, I hate that son of a bitch. <laughs> Anyway, there you go. People will tell you shit and share intimate things with you right there in public, and they don't think nothing of it. See, she could have passed that off. If she would have not said anything, I wouldn't have realized 
for probably days, if ever, that, hey, he was kind of pushy and rude and nasty, and you didn't say two words back to him, so he must have been dictating something to you or complaining about something. Well, she owns a bar, so. <laughs> so it seems like, hey, just because I was paying attention a little bit, I was enough. Yeah. Hmm. And then I think, well, then what if I would have been able to speak Danish? I could have got her into a bigger argument with that guy by interjecting my opinion. <laughs> and if you could have spoke Danish, you probably would have, just so oh, you could sit back and watch. No, I don't like to see women uh, be uh, handled badly like that. That's just rude. Just come up out of nowhere and start browbeating on somebody in public. Nah. Whatever language you do it in, it's not right. Well, yeah, it's it's rude, but... I, I know you and you you no. like to egg some you like to egg people on when I know what's going on sure but no not something like that no uh-uh. yeah but you know if you could have understood then maybe you could have given her a little bit now, more ammunition if I would have shut would have fired now, back no I would have shut him up right away or tried to got too big fight no I'm no. see don't confuse the radio me with the real me because uh, there's a social out there. And there's protocols and rules. You know? Oh, yeah. And there's, and there's laws, face-to-face consequences. Yeah, yeah, laws of probability is that if you're six foot two and I'm five foot four and I hit you, well, when you're done laughing, I'm not going to be a happy guy. Oh, yeah. All right. Well, you only have a split second to make that decision, and I haven't physically been involved in an altercation since I was before I was thirty. Okay, I stopped all that shit. Nothing came afterward. I haven't had any problems. So, no, nah, I'm I'm well done with all that. I've tried to tell you that before, but my character, you know, my playfulness makes people assume things about me that are absolutely not true. <laughs> Ask Mental. He's been to the grocery store with me here in Denmark. If he remembers the occasion, and it wasn't it wasn't grueling, and people were as nice. There was as nice here as there are anywhere else. He seemed pleased. So, mm, no, nah, I disagree. I'm gonna I'm gonna back out of that one. Say I disagree. I'm too old and I've mellowed. <laughs> So, ah, so what I so see living with cycles has well, mellowed you out some. And what I'll do in a chat room is different than what I'll do in a living room or a bar room. Well, and it it is easier to be obnoxious on the radio or in a chat room. Yeah, exactly. Sure, and that's what I mean. And nose to nose, these things don't happen to me. People don't treat me that way. I'm usually an outsider in society's things anyway, visiting somebody else or you know, no this is a rarity where I've been somewhere this many years and people just know who I am. You know? mm. There's a guy that visits a relative here from Greenland. He's here six months, goes back, comes back, goes back. Today I ran into him at the grocery. He needed a cigarette. Oh, okay, here. Sure, no problem. You know, first time all these years, he, uh, he's never asked me for anything. And then today, you know, say, hey, you got to smoke. Sure. But I didn't, you know, he could have been in a hurry or trying to go. So I don't know what his thing was. Didn't buy some, trying to quit. <laughs> yeah. But hmm. to be that, you know, to it's just, you know, a cigarette is not doing anybody a favor in the first place. It just was strange for him to even ask, is what I was getting at. Yeah. And then the the beggar in town that sits at the grocery, he has a cell phone, what do you call him, a smartphone. Oh. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Hysterical. You know, (laughs) when uh, this guy called the police on him, and he took a picture of the guy's car. (laughs) He goes, and this is my friend. And he's doing this to me. I took his picture. Wow. <laughs> wow. Guy get, you know, maybe I don't I didn't get involved in the whole conversation about what led up to it, but nothing came of it. But do gooders tend to call police to help people. 
Well, yeah, if if they are not able to actually step in and assist them themselves, yeah. So, yeah, well, there's still that level, even here. I mean, there's older people that have that uh, do-gooder behavior. Just not many of them left. They're, it's a dying breed. Hmm. Hmm. Well, there's many ways to do good. And then there's those people that engage the government to do good for you. And they're not. They're interfering in with your freedom. But they don't know that. They they think that you're helpless and need them. So they're going to yeah, call. Yeah, you, you need them to step up and protect you from yourself. Yeah, because what I think what the whole thing was is that winter was coming on. This is in, like, January. And uh, the guy was trying to get him off the street. And the guy lives on the street here to make money to send home to his family in in uh, Romania. Oh. So, and we all know it. I mean, it's not some secret. He's got a freaking passport. You know, he's... And, but he comes here to beg. He's too old to work, and he's in terrible physical condition. But he's a nice man. You know, he doesn't do anything bad to anybody. It's just... It's just Weird. This is the weirdest place I ever lived. Hmm. But even he has a smartphone. <laughs> so some people look at me and they go, "Wow, <laughs> no phone, huh?" Hmm. But all the people I associate with all have smartphones. <laughs> Ridiculous. Yeah. Hmm. Well, I have one, and I'm actually thinking about going back to a flip phone. Right, but in this time in life, uh, it's almost impossible. If if I had if I had anything more than Cirque, you know, to deal with out of uh, any kind of obligation, you know, life thing, promise, then I'd probably give in. But I don't. <laughs> so, if people wanted to find me, they can use the damn. <laughs> I've, I've got asked. He just gets on the. On the RLM on Sunday to look for me. Hey, you'll be around tomorrow. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, I've noticed that. So well, it's because I, I broke my phone. <laughs> oh, see how you are, darn kids these days. What was you doing with your phone? Did you drop it? Mm hmm. At about a hundred miles an hour. Where were you going that you dropped it at about 100 miles an hour? Kind of the opposite direction of the phone. <laughs> it was, I, yeah, it was fun. Anyway, so I ended up actually breaking the damn phone. But I don't want another phone. It's driving circuits. She calls me on the damn computer now. <laughs> ah. <laughs> but, see, I'm not, I'm not dodging the world completely, just a little bit. Okay. I really am, uh, I'm not an introvert so much as I am, what I guess it would be a hedonist. And if you're not capable of entertaining me, you might as well just stay away. Go bore somebody else. <laughs> I can bore myself. I don't need you. <laughs> oh, man. You know, we never used to say I'm bored around my mom because she would look at us and say, okay, I'll find something for you to do. And the other day when I was down at mom's, she said, I don't know. I just feel bored. And I looked at her, <laughs> and I started laughing. And she said, what's so funny? And I said, do wow. you not remember what you used to say to us when yeah. we would say that? Yeah. And then she started laughing, which made me go, okay, the memory is still working at least on some levels. Because yeah. her, her short term is not so good. But is it better than mine, or is it as bad as mine? <laughs> um, I do pretty bad because I can really butcher names. Like uh, I'll get a, a, com a complete reversal on some rock and roll name. I'll hear the first name and then I'll put it together with the wrong last name in my head. Mm. But, yeah, like kind of like being like Hansel, only different. Preconceived notions, you know where. I don't really pay enough attention to this shit to know in the first place. I don't really care. But I don't want to be left out, so I think that. Okay, that'll fit. Maybe it don't fit. So instead of just not being involved in the first place, which is what I should do, I get involved. 
and then I'm wrong. Oh, Lord, the end of the world, he's wrong. What are we going to do? He must be an idiot. Oh, my God, he's wrong. Have you ever been yeah, wrong, wrong about uh, Have you ever been wrong about something, really? When you think um, about it, what, the I, whole concept of, of yeah, but the whole concept of right and wrong is ignorant to me. It's a mm-hmm. judgment game on based on stories and fucking fairy tales. Shit, you couldn't prove to me, no matter what you do, and you know it, whoever you are out there in Radio Land. But the argument is so compelling that you're going to stand behind the words <laughs> without any physical proof. And I find that insane. Did you know that? <laughs> and I've been yeah. called insane my whole fucking life, Mary, so I might be an authorita <laughs> on that particular topic. Oh, really? It depends on the listener. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, some people think I'm a raven lunatic. And other people think I'm very well-rounded and know how to make a decision and stick with it, which is the other side of that coin. I don't show loyalty to, uh, it, it, what do you call them, fictions. <laughs> ah, yeah. well, yeah. No, I don't. I don't even like people very much for the most part. They really disappoint me. I'm kind of like Grimm. You know, we're, uh, people. So, because I've got this luxury of not speaking the language, the uh, encounters with them is so much nicer because of the lack of common bullshit that you go through speaking to people in public. The pleasantries are always I mean, how many times can you do it? You know, with somebody that you know, tell them the same thing. Yeah. So, so I just cut it all down to four words. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> no, actually, the, the reality of the whole thing come down to is uh, the Danes that like to speak English show off by speaking English to me. Because it's not as easy to do as I may make it sound to, you know, use this language that I use. To me, it's simple. And to the, some of the people that I hear use it simple to them. Then there's other people that would probably see English the way I see Danish. I couldn't get my mouth to do that if I was having sex. Leave me alone, you know. <laughs> <laughs> because you got to get your yeah, you got to get your tubes and your pipes and all your muscles and shit on a, on a mental level. You're kind of conducting your your verbal band, if you will. And your your muscles, like when I change voices to do some crazy voice, my mind already knows which muscles to do to, to make the voice come out the way I want it to sound. But yeah. when I try to do it in Danish, there's like this whole, like a train stopping, and I'm slow, and wait a minute. <laughs> so I, nah, <laughs> I can't do it. It's sad. I can remember like a name or maybe even say a name with a, like a little Danish kind of a sound to it, but it's still English. It's just, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. I, I hear you. Cause you know, me trying to pronounce words that, you know, written out that in from a different language or something, it's like, yeah, my mind is trying to convert it into English sounding sounds. Isn't that weird? And it just plain. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. here's Cirque. Cirque can speak English and Danish. And she's probably looking at me, rolling her eyes. Yeah, you big lazy head. But I just don't. I don't think I've got the ability at this point, with you know, with the amount of time it would take to to do something well enough to want to do it. There's the other thing. You know? Is when I speak in English and I use the right, you know, voice tone or inflections. I could sell you your own shorts. Really? Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. But that's what I know. That's what I'm comfortable with. Now, get me out of my comfort zone, and it's a whole other story. So I'm going to stick with English. 
and it's working. Uh, yeah, it's worked out very well. I've been could have been from anywhere else. I, this might not have worked out so well for me. It it helps that it's a language that it's common. Is, yeah. Yes. But it's not preferred or anything. But a lot of the kids find they use it on the internet a lot. So, hmm. And then see, and then that also shows me which of these kids is working where they're working to get somewhere and move on in life, be somebody, go to school, do shit. <clears throat> hmm. And it's usually the ones that speak multiple languages. They got plans. They're not going to be, you know, living in this podo town their whole life. Because no. that's what life's turned into for us. Well, you know, and, and I don't know if, well, no, I can't say that. I'd say there's probably about 20 to 30 percent of people want to get the hell out of Dodge as soon as they can. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then you'd be surprised how many people, you know, Oh, I moved back here. I just couldn't, or I've never moved away, or it's like, wow, you haven't even gone out and seen, like, another town, let alone another state or another country. Wow. wow. Yeah. That, to me, is unusual. And, I I mean, I haven't done a lot of globe trotting, but I have been outside of the United States territories. And then if you do it, it's not as glamorous if you've done it. As it is if you're hearing about it. You know, if I've been to yeah. London enough fucking times, blah, blah, blah. To me, it's like, yeah, big, oh, no big thing. But to somebody that's only been there maybe once or twice in their whole lifetime, they can't imagine, what? You just stayed there for six months because you felt like it? What? <laughs> well, you know, and that's that's just a completely people people's different perspectives and and priorities and yeah but i was staying know, i was staying there without a work visa i was staying there and not really working i wasn't working for a corporation or a government or any of that but people would find ways for me to help them so i could make money yeah but so then in I, other words you were not gainfully employed but you were still Doing odd jobs. Yeah, but I had the wherewithal to bring 30 uh, football hats and uh, 30 pair of 32, 32 Levi's with me when I went. Ah. You know, so I could have some kind of uh, retail ability to make a few bucks so I wouldn't be broke when I got there. Aha. Uh -huh. Because exchange, it's a buck, and at the time it was like a dollar eighty to the pound. And, I was all mm -hmm. conscious about my money. I was in my 20s, my first trip. I was like a hmm, little kid. But I thought, well, what am I going to do? I don't, I'm going to go there. I don't want to come right back. This time I'm staying like six months. So, but I didn't want to stay with my folks the whole time. So, played, you know, played with them for a couple of weeks and then just kind of went off. <laughs> Had fun. See, and you're much more adventurous than I am. I'm not quite that adventurous. And I'm a man, too. Which well, is, well yeah. you got to think about this, right? Put me and you together. And people are not going to be afraid of you, okay? People are going to look at me and go, oh, boy, and compared to you, right? But there's a, there's a mentality of people that are like me out there, and I've always had the ability to run into them out in public. So, to make a long story about this short, I decided I wanted to live in the west side of London, right? So, I go out mm -hmm. to the west side of London, and I'm just exploring around. I go to this bar, and I, I run into this guy, and the first thing this fucker says to me is, hey, you want some Valium? <laughs> so, me and Alfie, Indeed. yeah, me and Alfie hit it off right away. I said, yeah, you smoke weed? And I had a pocket full of weed. He had a pocket full of Valium. So, anyway... He ends up talking to me, finding out, oh, you're from America, blah, blah, blah. Where are you staying? I said, well, I'm staying at my folks, and I'm getting out here to look around and find my own place. He says, oh, just like the football guy. Oh, this is your lucky day. Says, my brother he and me have a place, but he never comes. He just rents it. Now, I stay there alone. 
Hmm. What he didn't tell me was in the mornings, he had this routine. He'd open his freaking balcony doors and stand on the balcony and scream, why me at the top of his lungs like a rooster in the morning? <laughs> ah. Yeah, he was a little fucked up drinking and pills and shit, but he was a fun guy. <laughs> I still remember his name. And, and, the, and the wild shit that came from, you know, I meet Alfie, and then I met some this other guy from South Africa, and he was trying to marry this girl so he could get a green card, and he needed somebody to witness, and so did she. Well, I was dating this girl, and I, so, yeah, we've known them for years. <laughs> I'm American. <laughs> it was just like, this. you can't make this shit up. <laughs> and I, And here I am talking about it, and it sounds like, you're just making that shit up. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, the truth is stranger than fiction, though. Right, right. But the, I guess the the reason I got on the rant in the first place is my normal is the next guy's. You've never did that. Yeah. And then the older you get. All right. Then what, now at this point in life, here I am in Denmark sitting in a Danish bar, don't speak two words of Danish. I could tell these people I've had sex with aliens, and they probably would think about it. <laughs> you know, because what could be out of my reach, considering I'm American, but I'm living here in paradise? Uh, aliens. Okay, well, maybe it was a bad example. but <laughs> All I mean is, there's so much in, in the world you can choose to go do if you really want to. You just don't know it. We're, we're limited by the exteriors. They, they tell you you can't do this, you can't do that. No, 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 no. It's bad for you. Blah, 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 blah. All that crap all my life. But when I was young, I got introduced to weed as a teenager. And all the talk that went along with it. You know, this stuff's not bad for you. People are telling you shit, stories. It's not real. It's bullshit. You know, here, smoke some of this. Went, wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. See, and to me, I mean, I I don't have a problem with people, but I just, unless I need to sleep and I'm having a hard time sleeping, I just don't. Well, where was that's what it does? It puts me to sleep. Where was the your favorite place you ever been, and for how long were you there? My favorite place I'd ever been? Yeah. Anything come to mind, pop up? You know, wow. Especially you know, some place that you were that was like perfect. Yeah, I got a place that was perfect. I'll tell you after you tell me. Uh, Well, I lived in the Springs for about six months. The uh, Springs. Colorado Springs. Ah. And that was pretty freaking awesome. What Great were you, people. What were you doing for the, uh, your... Um, yeah. Well... <laughs> I detailed cars, actually. Wow. Now that so, see, that's not like something you would expect a girl to to do, but I'll bet you're better at it than I would be. Well, it was you know, it was something to earn some money so I could stay in the springs. So you know, if it wasn't the springs it would be Craig, Colorado. I absolutely loved it out in Craig, Colorado. It was beautiful country. Some of the people were total douchebags, <laughs> but yeah. beautiful country, yeah. beautiful country. Hmm. The only problem is I like to have more than two months of uh, spring, summer, fall. Hmm. So where you Be are now is perfect for your needs? Uh, pretty much, yeah. Even yeah, with all the complaining? I get to have all of the seasons. And okay, but you complain when it's extreme. Not a well, lot. yeah, because i got to have something to bitch about. Oh, okay. It's not like you don't know. Yeah. I mean, you know, bitch about something I have absolutely no control over so that at least I feel better about bitching about something because I have no control over it. Yeah. The weather's yeah. going to do what the weather's going to do. Yep. You damn right, Skippy. And so, yeah, there are days when I go, good Lord, it's windy out there. or Good Lord, it's hot or good Lord, it's cold. But you know what? Yeah. I have some place I can go to hide from those things. Oh. So, yeah. My bitching yeah. about it is yeah. just bitching. Yeah. There's day, there's days I do that too. You know what they're called? What? Every day. 
Oh, well, there you go. I've got my Jew card. I can I can whine about shit when it's good. But anyway, back to the the question about best place. So you like Colorado Springs, okay? Ben, yeah. All right. I was listening to uh, Lonnie Lonnie Clark this week to support the other shows on reallibertymedia.com. dot com. Whether I agree with your principles or not, or your topics, that's you know that that shouldn't yeah. that shouldn't define anything. That's just a fucking opinion about what you're talking about. But when I was listening to her show, I was reminded about a place I used to go when I was uh, 18, 17, 18, 19 years old, and we used to drive up to San Luis Obispo. Okay. And go to a little place called Pirate's Cove under the nuclear site, and skit and do the sun the nude bay, the nude beach thing. Ah, right. And there was a nuclear plant right up on the freaking cliff. Now uh-huh. in 1979, I think it was, I think it was 79. Anyway. It was when uh, gambling was legal in Atlantic City. It was uh, resorts was still the only casino open to the public, and Caesars was coming up. It was going to be the next one. So that period of time, and uh, then the nuclear station at Three Mile Island melted, and I'm living in Atlantic City, New Jersey. Now, I think, from what I understand of uh, this nuclear stuff. Not that, not that <clears throat> handling it improperly will cause problems. That that I agree. That part I agree with. What I disagree with is the legal terms that they've used to disguise what they're doing have made us all look stupid chasing a ghost. Mm, yeah. Nuclear waste. To the person listening on the news, that means nuclear waste. Nuclear waste to the nuclear industry or a nuclear lawyer means something completely different. Mm-hmm. Because the, the the definition of the word waste is presented to the public in one respect, but then used legally in a different respect. So it leaves us out here going, well... You sound like a nutcase telling them there's not a lot to be afraid of when they've got so much proof. And I look for their proof. And yet, you know, just like the magic bullet or, uh, you know, the terrorist that took down the Twin Towers, it's a great story. But I don't mm-hmm. I don't see your side of it. So people get offended and think I'm arguing with them. You know, and that's not the case. I'm just saying I, I see more to this than just this. And then I've been around for 60 years. Every freaking country I've been to has got some kind of fucking, what, what do I call it, shamdemic. You're going to die of this. You're going to get that. Blah, blah. Fucking blah, blah, blah. And at the end, it's, hey, take this blood pressure medicine. You're, this will help you. And that's the part that I should have been afraid of. Not the nuclear. Huh. Nuclear didn't do nothing to me. Yeah. Well, and when you stop and realize it, everything emits radiation at one level or another. And it's just like anything else. Anything in excess is detrimental to your health. Yeah, but when you start, you know, disagreeing in any fashion with somebody that's, you know, uh, Married to their concept, like I am about finance. You can't change my mind. There's no fucking way. It took me forever to get here. So, no, I'm not, it's not possible. And I'm looking at the situation with, you know, Lonnie's side of the argument. She took her this far to get where she's at now. So things convinced her of what she sees. And I'm not trying to dissuade that side of it so much as. You're looking at part of it, but not all of it. There's so much more, and you're being fear-mongered by experts that know how to keep you afraid. And when you're yeah. when you're in fear, you're not capable of learning. You need to get out of the fear to learn beyond where you're at. And, 
critical thinking is very difficult to do when you're in the fear mode. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, how would a person uh, identify that in their own in their own stand at the time? Oh, I'm seeing this because I'm in fear. They could say that to me. Well, you see the You know, they, yeah, that was my phone. Yeah, it was a neighbor. They could look at me and say, well, you're just afraid of the Federal Reserve Banking. Well, yeah, I am because it's a, a fucking stupid way to do business. It's, it's a losing game. And there would be no defending that. But when you say that to a person about nuclear, you're afraid of a ghost. No, I'm not. Okay, show me. Physically show me your proof. And they got none. They got stories and they got meltdowns and they got everything in the fucking world but a goddamn picture of something that's real. And it's sad because we're always deprived, whoever we are, the foundation of what will prove our story, whatever that story is. Well. Mm. So in the long run, Mary, what I'm saying, we're both equally sound wacky to the other side. Of the oh, yeah. Yeah. And I'm not. Well, I, that's because we're expressing our own version of reality. Right. And the lack of devastation is what I'm painfully aware of. Not. not and, the, uh, and the way that the governments have uh, misrepresented things like 9 11, um, <laughs> the Hiroshima. I mean, wow. How do you know that was a nuclear fucking bomb? Because they called it one? I mean, really? That's it. Well, and even if you look at the pictures and stuff of some of that stuff, mm. you look at Hiroshima and Nagasaki now, and then you look at Detroit. Which one looks worse? Hiroshima and Nagasaki have come back. They're prosperous. And look that doesn't Detroit. make sense. Where's the thousands of years of radiation poisoning and blah, 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 blah. So, yeah. wait a minute. So, Okay. Maybe what really indeed that took place is maybe a little mixture, you know, a little nuclear for, you know, the mushroom cloud and some dynamite for some devastation because they got a mortality rate out of this. And here we got oh, yeah. 70 years later and it's already flourishing. So what? Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, and look at Chernobyl. Nobody's allowed to go back there. Yeah. And yet the wildlife has pretty much reclaimed it. Or what about you know, the... You it's, it's not a desolate wasteland. Hundreds of experiment explosions in Nevada. Yeah. Come on. I mean, yeah, I'm not saying that it doesn't do damage when in excessive amounts. All but right. But anything right. in excessive amounts will do damage. Okay, well, maybe they're misrepresenting to the public how to mishandle this stuff. To keep us all stupid, which is what they do pretty much. Would it, oh, yeah. All right. Well, like, uh, <laughs> change the subject here. Uh, red flag laws in New Mexico, people. Wow. Grim was talking about it last night. And they're not real hot about legalizing weed. Well, I'd say go stick with the black market, but, you know, that's me. Because the government's going to get their grubby, greasy, money-grubbing paws all over your weed. And they're going to turn it into something that you, you wouldn't want to feed a, a hungry cat. You know? And you go, oh, yeah. that poor cat, it'll just get sick and die. Let's not do that. And, but they want you to smoke it. But you don't know that yet because this is legalization. And with legalization comes control of the product that you're putting in your ass. And I trust the guy that wants me to come back and buy some more next month, not not the government. Yeah. Well, and that's basically because the government is filled with people that, A, want to get a good retirement and don't stop to realize that that good retirement is on the back of everybody else, and, B, people that want to tell other people what to do and how to live. Do you want to, that's, do you want to tell me what to do and how to live? No. I do. I want to tell every fucking body the three fucking rules that Flash came up with that if you follow these three rules, all of us together, it cannot fucking fail. 
Absolutely mm-hmm. no way. And I run my life with circle on the same three simple fucking rules. Number one, do not live in lies. Do not believe the lies. It's all you got to do. Just get the fucking truth and hold on to that and go, oh, they lied. Okay, there's your start. Don't kill anyone. It's the easiest part. And the third part is grow hemp and cannabis like you know what you're doing. And I'm telling you, if we did those three things as a collective, government and all that shit, religion wouldn't be necessary because people would be living in the fucking real truth of life. But we don't know what it is. Right. No. Okay. And because I, we have languages, and languages yeah. can easily be subverted. And I also believe, though, that because we're, we have something, we're, we're like that little kid with a cookie, afraid to let it go, so they crush it, and then it's like, ugh. You know? Yeah. So instead of relaxing and letting go of this stuff that's really doing us harm and replacing it with something superior... Which would take time, and you'd probably have to give up your phone and your internet for a couple of days. Oh, no! <laughs> yeah. Did you see Grimmy gave you a pro tip? Oh, no. I, I, I don't know. Yeah, don't put weed in your ass. I don't. But, okay. you know, the, there are, I think there's suppositories available for those of you that, you know, like a little rectal excitement. <laughs> Yeah. You know, you can also do celery. Celery apparently is a very is a rectal floss. Oh, <laughs> my <laughs> wife brought me a lixor. Thank you. Uh, Aww. Yeah, I know. She, she loves you. I still too, and we're we're coming up on six years next uh, couple weeks. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's gone. Where's it gone? I don't. I don't think it goes anywhere. I think it, you wear time like a suit, baby. You know, there you go. Oh, and your time weighs heavy on you. <laughs> I don't know. I've been I've been called um, equally by females, both attractive and unattractive. So I don't know. It's a, just a matter of taste how you see other people. You can't judge yourself. To me, uh, I can't judge myself. On some passing female's opinion about my appearance. I mean, crying out loud, you don't know what you're listening to. She might be a feminist. She might be Nazi. She might be blind. (laughs) You know, I'm just saying. It's like guys. Guys are just as fucking bad. Worse. Well, no, we're not worse. We're just more vocal about it. If you hang out with enough women in your life without a bunch of guys around, you find out women ain't no damn different than men. They just got boobs. And well, ima- we and don't magic, have the gear shift and ball bearings. Yeah, the magic so. triangle can get them whatever they want. Hmm. If they so choose. Oh, don't play. Yeah, games. if they so choose. If yeah. they so choose to. You, yeah, because life is like a, it's like a bounty out there. You can get into any sick fuck thing you want to. Just go find a church or a bank. Hmm. Yeah. What? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Pretty much. Like, well, I, I, mm. banks got to hire people to, you know, to do stuff. You know, and every time I go to the bank, because yeah, I do have to go to the bank occasionally. Yeah. And every time I go, it's like I wonder if they really understand what they're doing. Mm. Oh, the people and, you that know, work. I think a lot no, of no, yeah, no, that work at the bank. I, Clueless. It's just, and then I. Then it just extends out to these doctors. Do they really understand what they're doing? Mm. And then, you know, you you could say that about just about any occupation anymore. Do they really understand what they're doing? <laughs> like, what's your favorite one on that one? Medicine? Um, Politics? Medicine is a biggie right now. But the other, one, yeah. the other one that really I keep thinking, you know, if the IRS just went away, yeah. how many people would be out of a job and be pissed and bitch and moan and say, no, we've got to bring it back because I need my job? Because if you look at how many different feeder industries have come up 
off of the IRS and this whole concept of paying taxes. Yeah. It's crazy. Uh, well, see, they use places where it works to to sell it to places where it doesn't work. And it's basically a state of mind that we're kept in by the state that we live in. Because they create their own hatred of their self with all the you know stupid shit they do. And, mm-hmm. and, and here's the most sickening part of politics to me. Is everybody, no matter what side of the aisle you're on, or if you're neutral to the aisle, you're independent, whatever, you still are looking at the same lion fucking thieves. And somehow in your mind, you think one thief is better than the other thief. And I cannot... Under- They're all related to each other, by the way. Trump and Hildog are cousins. Yeah. Well, I mean, come on, people. You know, you might okay, not... Okay, but if you if you extrapolate it out, we're all cousins. No, I mean, no, I've no, 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 that, no, no, no. I've no, looked no. at that, some of that shit, and it's like 18... 18- Cousin you, you or whatever like that. No, you won't marry into those families. N- no. Okay, and and so how do they decide what are those families? Because I tell you what, I'm lines. RH negative, so yeah. technically yeah. I'm classified as one of them. I love you too, damn van meter. Well, uh, ooh, a little girly love on the RLM. Grim will That's be right. happy. Hey, Donna, how you doing? And uh, say hey to Vinny. Uh, I'm very well aware Vinny's not around because I spent a lot of time reading and talking to him, you know. Mm-hmm. So it's weird to go this long without seeing old, you know, dorky Vinny around. Yeah. So, yeah. I would assume that if anything was wrong, Donna would have been all over telling us. So his recovery, I'm assuming it's going well because we're not getting any input, you know. Too much. We know how people can overdo it. Yeah. We want to tell you every freight like Vinny. If it was Vinny telling us, we'd know how many times he went to the bathroom, what color the toilet paper was, whether he was wearing his socks or not, all the important stuff. Ah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, and I've I've had chats with Vinny yeah. over the years and yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. He's he's very uh, dedicated to detail. <laughs> oh, yeah. And there are times when it's like, Vinny, seriously, okay, just because we both have a camera does not mean I want to see your tidy whitey. And you okay? thought you didn't have a clutch. Whoosh. Baby. Yeah. Damn. <laughs> anyway, so uh, earlier I threw a, a copy of that link that Rob sent us, and I wrote in the notes, it says, Rob Works sent us this link. And underneath it, it's called uh, Re- Rex research.com and it's called Space Juice. And I just scratched just the first pages. So, hmm. I've got a ways yeah. to go before I have an opinion on your input. It's going to take me a little while to read through that. I'm not that smart. So, give me some time, Rob. And maybe Tuesday, uh, you plan on working uh, with me on the radio on Tuesday here, little Missy? And we could have, uh, huh? yeah. Ah, you mind yeah, if I, I, I invite Rob Works or, along for a little input on his uh, stuff? And then he can always pitch his snake oil. Yeah, that would be cool. Snake oil. How do you oil a snake? <laughs> Slowly. <laughs> or how do you milk a snake to get oil? That's what I, I don't want to know. Really I don't know. Slowly. <laughs> I don't. I don't uh, know. You don't. You've opened a can of worms. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. <laughs> no. There's a difference. But it, worms are a little bitty. It, it is oh. amazing, though, the collective genius that a group can have. You know, a group of people that don't even know each other. <laughs> really. We all know each other through the electronic world, but the brains are just phenomenal. Yeah, they're, yeah. Yeah, there are we, some very smart people out there that I feel very privileged to have encountered on the interwebs. And that, yes. um, and there's so many more people that are not going to get to know than there are that do. And some of the people that get to hear the stuff that we hear from these other people mock and make fun of the people that we're uh, 
we're looking up to for our answers. It's a really messed up, uh, unbalanced game. And I, for one, think if, if you took the deceit out of the game and your goal from the onset was just to be honest and do things the best way for everybody, we wouldn't have these results. But we've got greed and what's the other one? Uh, competition. You know? Yeah. Wow. So, competition instead of cooperation. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. If I compete with Cirque, then what's good's going to come of it? You know, it's just like a big ego thing with males and females. Uh, well, I do this better than you. Yeah, you sure do, baby. <laughs> Fuck, life is good. <laughs> but that's not how we behave. Not me specifically, but we as a collective, I don't think. They've pitted the genders against each other pretty good. You know? Oh, yeah, and that was done centuries ago. Yeah, well, whenever it was done. how that That is... Still, to this day, it's even a topic. It should be so obvious that it's just a financial game the tax man plays with you. You know? It, yeah. To sell this sustain your life through slavery crap. Yeah. Well, yeah. Pretty yeah. much. You're it's not an indentured you've gotta, servant. You've You're gotta a homeowner. Get hot, you know. It's a dog eat dog world, and you gotta one up your neighbors, and yeah, all these little mantras. And yet, when I see the dogs try to interact with each other, most of the time they're just curious and they want to sniff and play. There, there's no anger to it. There's no. territorial dogs that they're different. Their interactions are different, but they're not. Yeah. All, they're not the majority of the dog world. So I don't judge all dogs by the behavior of one dog. <laughs> Nor do yeah. I judge the behavior of all dogs on the behavior of most dogs. Yeah. So how do I do it then? I don't know. How do you do it? How do you do? I don't think I do. I just, if I pass somebody with a dog I, and I'm slow enough or... You know, it depends on the speed I'm doing or what's around. I'll let the dog smell my hand when I pass it. And it'll always be the one dog that wants to know. Because not all of them give a shit. Like, Hannah's yeah. a sniffer. Hannah wants to know. And when Hannah greets me when I come in from being out, the first thing she wants to do is smell my hands. Oh, yeah. Bubba's a sniffer, too. Okay. Well, so identifying that personality in, a, in an animal, go figure. I don't know. But I don't often do it. But when I do put my hand down, there's always that one dog that wants to go, Hey, you're, you smell good. What kind of dog you got? I smell your dog. Of you. you know, they do. It's a pleasant experience. I don't get bit at or barked at or none of that. See, and I like to say Bubba is my um, Gladys Kravitz of the canine world. That dog is the <laughs> nosiest damn dog. Yeah. Good Lord. Gladys Kravitz. How is he your, is. How is your neighbor Kravitz doing anyway? She got oh. the satellite on, you know, beamed in on you yet? Actually, that was the phone call that was ringing through was... Gladys Clav Kravitz Whoa. was calling. To make sure you and were so, live on the radio. <laughs> uh, probably. God only knows what she's... She's... Bless her heart. What? <sighs> don't you think it's ridiculous that, that I believe that we could replace oil? And not only do I believe we could replace oil, I believe that in some places it would, wouldn't take more than 30 days. Yeah. And then I found a way to fund it. Oh, yeah? Mm -hmm. How's that? Well, there's a guy named George Soros, right? Oh, shit. And there's <laughs> a, Well, let me finish. Okay. I'm, I'm prepping the fucking stew here. Let me create my masterpiece. And there's another guy named Warren Buffett. Uh-huh. Okay. And then there's another couple of guys, Bill Gates, so, uh, Donald Trump. That other billionaire guy in New York wants to be president, whatever his name is. Well, you get these guys. Bilderberg? Yeah, you, you oh, lure no, them. Bilderberg, what you, the hell? You lure, I don't know. 
I'm telling the story here. You, I know. I'm listening. Uh, you lure them to a, a, a building in New York City, and you tell them that they're there to take over the entire world. And when they get there, you bomb the whole fucking building and you send all their money to all the people with the social security number. Yeah, but they don't really have money. Doesn't matter. It's creative accounting. Can you see uh, if this fucking thing, they want to make a sham out of this to keep us down because what they could do instead of what they do is give every social security in American with a social security number, give them $10 million. There you go. You know, and back in 2008 when we had that big financial crisis mm -hmm. and they were talking about bailing out banks, and I said, why the hell are they bailing out <laughs> banks? Banks are the ones that created this shit. If you really want to pump up the economy and get the economy moving, send – because, you know, the, I think the package – I don't remember how much money it was now, like two point some trillion or yeah, something. Yeah, it was that crazy outrageous. Crazy-ass number. Yeah. And I said, you know, you break that down to every taxpaying person in the United States. So basically, you could send each one of them twenty eight thousand dollars. Okay, well, whatever. for the same money that you're bailing out these goddamn banks that did this in the first place, you send every person that filed a tax return twenty eight thousand dollars. Granted, some of them will sock it away in savings, but most of them none of it will would go be out in cash. Buy something. Whoa, 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 whoa! None of it would be. In Cash in the first place. It would all be no, electronic, no. creative accounting. Yeah, then it would not? all be electronically. Okay, right. so some it, of them will still put it in a savings account oh, or put it please. wherever. And some, uh, but pre I'd say probably eighty percent would go out and buy something. You're killing my story, then. I wanted and to be higher. And if you stop and that. think about three hundred million people, yeah. and eighty percent of that three hundred million people all of a sudden had the moolah to go out and buy something. That's gonna stimulate an economy, let me tell you. Right. Like, and that oh. was the, that was the point of my rant in the first place. Is they don't do anything for anybody but their self and their friends. Yeah. Well, and, and stick everyone else with the tab. And this is the this is the collective life. This is what people aspire to support. Yeah, yeah. And that's why I keep telling them this political party system that you've got where you got the Republican Party oh. and the Democratic Party uh. and the Independent Party uh. and the Green Party uh. and all these other different parties and you know what? All yeah. them parties are partying <laughs> on our time yeah. and we huh. get stuck with the tab yeah. and we get to clean up the mess after they're done partying. Yeah, because When are you people going to freaking wake up? You'll be working well after it, the money's not real, so the debt just no. keeps, keeps growing because it doesn't ever get paid. And it's just a fantasy. We're we're so fucked. So I was just being optimistic and looking at the other side. What if they just took the debt, made cash out of it, and give it all away to people that were part of their corporation or whatever? Solves all your spending problems right there. Everybody got money. They're going to be buying shit. Oh, yeah. Who's going to do the work? Oh, here we go. See, that we've been somebody's got to make the stuff that these people are buying but we've been conditioned to think that if you have so much then you then you're complacent physically you won't work anymore well yeah where do you get the idea that Donald Trump does any fucking work ever what does he work doing sitting at a table writing stuff or Listening to his advisor tell him which way to vote or he'll kill you. You know, that's easy. I could do that. I could be a Donald Trump. I could do that. Except for the kissing the Jewish wall and taking the cock up the ass part. I couldn't handle that. Nah, that's going too far. But uh, I think I could hang with... No, I couldn't do it. I'm, I'm exaggerating. Ugh. My honest side would come out and I'd go, fuck you. Are you out of your mind? And then they'd shoot me. So, hmm. See, and I uh, think it would be interesting to have a conversation with Melania. I just, I just <laughs> want to be in the same room with her and have a conversation with her so I can look her in uh, the eyes when I'm talking to her. And say what? I don't know. I don't know. Whatever popped into my head. Why you know how that scary be that can be. Well, here, what frightens me about her is that that woman has publicly claimed she is attracted to Donald Trump. Uh, so? 
Oh, gross. Please. You know, guilt by association. No. I'm sorry, but uh, I... Uh, okay, you know what? There's wow. there's someone for everybody. Exactly. And, exactly. But you're all gross. I mean, there's shit. Look at it. It's Jerry not look Nash. at. I, I have my Good memories God. of what I've been told about Donald Trump in my life. And very little of it was any good. So, and what I saw made it even look truer. So, my opinion of him is very low. On the man scale, he's like a negative five. He's not even going to be a man for another 40 or 50 years. So, for her to be married to that piece of shit, my opinion is like, oh, lady, you got problems. <coughs> Excuse me. And see, that's that's... Probably a question I would ask her is, what did you see in him? Or she was a money what? grubbing whore and she chased and got the big fat cat. I don't know. From what I've read about before she met him, I think she she was sitting pretty good hmm. to start with. So you wouldn't say she's just another greedy woman with a triangle? You know, I'm not going to – I haven't talked – I I've gotten to the point in my life where I'm just not going to make any kind of judgment on people like that unless I actually talk to them. I start out in judgment. You know, even with, Sa even with oh. San Fran Nan, I yeah. mean, I am – I'm leaning towards the Botox has totally poisoned her brain, but I haven't actually talked to that woman. Excellent point. Or that point. creature or whatever. Then look at the results around these said people and – that's what yeah, I mean I'll, about if we weren't always having to decide if we're being lied to or not, this whole conversation wouldn't be needed. <laughs> you know, it's a necessity to discern the truth that gives us a reason to even bother with doing a radio show. Yeah. Because if we were just living in the truth, wow, we wouldn't have to argue about this being right or that being wrong or my opinion about her versus your opinion about him. It wouldn't even be interesting. We'd be different. We we would we would and, you have know, become if we were actually different. living in the truth, we wouldn't have a need for language either. Because if you lived in the truth, you could probably telepathically communicate with people, and you can't lie. I when wonder. People can read your mind. Yeah. Well, I wonder how much of that uh, is possible now, just by passing by people, you know, over the years here that they know. They know I'm not a threat to anyone. They don't know me, but they know me. So yeah. how, okay, well, see, repetition proves. It's a vibe. But you're right. And then when the, you see something happen the same way time after time, after a while, you, you're used to, you expect it. You know? So if I walk down the street and all of a sudden started punching on somebody, something would be wrong. You know? Yes. Because I've never acted out in any kind of you know, crazy way since I've been here. So if I did, whoops. Everybody would go, uh-oh, something's right. up with him. And what I mean is I've been here long enough to have that kind of uh, ability. I just don't want it. You know, I'm a, a responsible member of my society by keeping my business down. You know, Don't act out and be crazy. That's nuts. Don't do these things. It's easy. Never comes to mind in the first place. But in the back burner, you know, because I like to get plowed at the bar and do that kind of stuff. But I can also tell myself, no, I'm not going to do that today. Hmm. And other people claim, oh, I've got to have this and I've got to have that. And me, if I run out of smoke, I, you know what happened? I run out of smoke. So it's not life or death. It's today. I'm always the guy that, yeah, tomorrow's not here yet. We'll, we'll see what happens. But other people, yeah. mm, man, if they don't have whatever their desire is right there, they panic. I'm I'm well above that, whether it's above or not that, personal opinion. It, you're just on mm. a different frequency. A slave to, yeah, I'm not a slave to the environment uh, trappings. Hey, we got a burp in the chat and a frog 1A. Hey, frog. Frog popped up, huh? Oh. Yep. And a burp. Somebody's, oh, I, now I feel a burp. <laughs> yeah, I, hey, Job, I have a hard time 
I got two screens and I always got five things going on and, and I don't read the chat when I do radio. I try to sometimes, but then it's behind, so I, it always gets messed up. And then I get accused of not reading the chat. Well, I'm slow. Ah. <laughs> and you know what? <laughs> we, we've made it to the end of the dark table. Yes, but we, we have. Had some, I had some interesting concepts today, I thought. I wrote down in notes. Want to hear what, what we came up with? Today was Don't Be Ridiculous, We Can't Read. Light spoil, and we talked about the uh, latest shamdemic. It's called coronavirus. Um, giving up believing and believing. That was kind of fun. The farmer says that's a, maybe we'll give him a, uh, every week. We'll come up with some new word he comes up with, and then <laughs> Rob Works put out that uh, Space Juice sixty-five page link uh, for eggheads that want to read a different. You know, perspective in simple terms. That's the way he explained it. So I put a copy in the notes and then uh fresh and Graham's he strolled down memory lane. And uh yeah. there's the notes for Grimner. Yay. Any, anything you want to add to that or is that complete um, enough for you? I really can't think of oh, okay now I'm sending them bye notes. Then this way Grim doesn't, you know, he gets his shit done, and I get my shit done. Everybody gets it done. Yeah. Yay, everybody gets their shit done, and you got plenty of paper to finish up the paperwork after you take the shit or leave a shit. Yeah. Why do you take a shit instead of leaving a shit? It's the, I don't want to take it anywhere. See, you know the answer to this question. It's the fucking <laughs> butchering of dog Latin. That's why. Because we've inadvertently fallen into this trap that we're all in, using the wrong word at the wrong time for the wrong reason. But through definition, we don't know that. It's a lot of work to unravel this mess. Yeah. But you know what? You start pulling enough strings and it starts unraveling all by itself. And then you don't have to work at it anymore. It just unravels right before your eyes. No, because it's a big, 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 big world. And... It maybe see it's like how I live here. This little bit of the corner of where I'm at's fine, but twenty miles from here, I might not like it so much. Well, that's because that's not here and that's not now. Well, what, whatever it is, you know. But so it's not the whole world is never going to be right. We're always going to be what we are. What we need to be is taught better. I think we've learned a lot of crap. That is really it's a, it wastes your whole damn life chasing shit that you you know you'll never have and you don't know that knowing it is after fight right there being aware that you're just visiting you know this stuff's all temporary yeah yeah well there, it's it's a frame of mind and it's a reality because you can't take it with you when you go but is it even really here. <laughs> I'll see you on Tuesday. Maybe we'll remember to bring that crap back up and have a giggle about it. Hmm. Is it really here? Well, if it's in your reality, it must be really here for you. Oh, and if you're interested, there's a schedule on the reallibertymedia.com. Open it up in your browser. And it's got a really informative front page. It's got it's idiot-proof. I can navigate it, and I'm bad on a computer, so... If you're curious and you want to see what else we got, come look. And uh, yeah. Oh yeah, and uh, one more. Th- no, I already did the begging. This is the month we beg for money from the listeners and people out there trying to, you know, looking for a tax shelter. <laughs> huh? Ah. Huh? huh? Yeah, yeah, I hear we they got, got a, s- a tax shelter. So is that where you shelter your taxes? I don't. I have know. tax. That you put on a chair, and if someone sits on them, they get a pain in the ass? Is that the kind of tax you're talking about? I was trying to make a funny financial joke in it. And and I turned it into a pain in the ass. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll be looking forward to talking to you on Tuesday, and we're, uh, hopefully we'll have Rob Works pop up. We're, we'll give it a shot one way or the other. And otherwise... Huh? Yeah. Huh? Huh? See you. Love you. Bye. You know, that's what you think, round eyes. <laughs>